I wanted to share my thoughts about a book which I read over the winter, which is Miljanko Jergovic's Kin. The original title is Rodbina. It was published in Zagreb in 2014, and then it was republished, translated um, in English in 2021 by Russell Scott Valentino. And you can read about that task because the book is about 750 pages long. And Valentino made a blog about his experiences translating it because I think it was quite, quite tricky. But um, I wanted to talk about it for different reasons to that. So let's get into it. Why do I appreciate Kin and Jergovic's storytelling? He leaves no story unexplored, and when he does, he regrets that a novel could be written about this or that obscure figure, whose life would reveal a great deal about the 20th century, or everyday life in Sarajevo, or cooking, beekeeping, bookkeeping. He recognises as pathology his desire to ask questions to his mother, even on her deathbed, about people who she or they used to know and what she remembers about them. It may be pathological, but he acknowledges that this is a human desire to keep stories alive in memory and by committing these memories to paper, immortalizing them. He is the first writer in his family history, but they were all obsessed with record keeping, which helps him to record them for posterity and shows us that he is truly connected to his ancestors, despite the fact that he evidently does not believe he belongs anywhere. This is a book about a century of happenings, and it's brimming with hilarious, horrific, tragic stories that spin off a family, some factual, but most in a broader sense, true. I believe that such work is worth reading for anyone interested in remembering and forgetting. It struck me just how much more affecting it is than anything that could be written within the historical or ethnographical fields about memory in Bosnia or anywhere. It's worth hearing stories of the Kufarashi, a Sarajevo word for, in, for assorted settlers of various European stripes, mostly Germans, who arrived and practically disappeared within a century. They don't have a land, and neither does Jergovic, in his telling. They were not an important people in the former Yugoslavia, and they are scattered or few now. They are his kin, but they no longer exist, and with him they will die. With his mother, a litany of untold stories also died. The qualities of these stories themselves and the sadness and loss explored by Jergovic's style and framing are the reasons why this book works. I would read almost any set of stories about Sarajevo because it's one of the most storied places, but Kin is different, it's universal. In a time when we're being told to accept rigid binaries of opposition, between people and places. It is about that very same unpleasant, rude, vulgar, but totally normal heterogeneity and difference between places and people. It should inspire a million bitter, joyful, less well put together memoirs of ordinary people. I love that he embraces the richness of each story with equal intensity and is something to aspire towards. I believe we should tell thick, rough, grisly stories that overflow with uncomfortable details. I'm evangelical about the power of any typical life story, if told in a way that refuses oversimplification and stereotyping. His book was something as a personal escape for me, but I didn't escape into a particularly pleasant world. What I feel I share with Jelgovic is this simple addiction to stories hearing them, telling them, writing them down. Just stories for story's sake. I could quote the whole book, but let's go for just one part about Metash and Sepeterovac, which is where he grew up as a young person in Sarajevo, up on a hill. And I'm going to quote a couple of sections here. Our Miladin Nadojevic street was named after a Herzegovinian hero from Stolac. And there's a nice story about him. An educated man, government official and member of the then illegal Communist Party of Yugoslavia, he organised an uprising on Mount Trebevic. He died young in fall 1941 in hand-to-hand -hand fighting with the Ustasha near Kalinovic. The Ustasha buried him, 
but the villagers from Chivalier dug him up at night in secret and gave him an orthodox funeral in their graveyard. That was where we moved in the summer of 1969. My grandfather Fran Franjo Reitz lived there only three years. He died in the early fall of 1972. But even during those three years, we were only here in the summer, while winter, fall and spring we lived in Dervenik. In those years, whenever he would come back from town by taxi, he had to come by taxi because of his asthma, and tell the driver his address, he would immediately know whether the man driving him was an old timer or someone who had resettled in Sarajevo. At the mention of Miladin Radojevic street, an old timer would respond quizzically, Sepetarevets? Yes, Sepetarevets. This was a memory. It was unusually important to my nono that people remember. He had nothing against the ones who forgot or the ones who came from elsewhere, but it was important to him that there be those who did still remember around him, and he preferred getting that sideways glance from the cabbie who would ask, Sepetarevets? To just being driven in silence to Miladin Radojevic street. His life was a patchwork of memories. He had never had a house built for himself, never made a lot of money, nor had life brought him happiness. The present was for the most part sorrowful, the future threatening. But the past was luxurious and rich with stories. So even the cabbies who knew to ask Sepeteravats were important. They showed that they too remembered and that memory was important to them as well. They were his brothers in memory. And then there's just another bit, which is about 10 pages later, which is an interesting story. Um, and I'm going to read it. Bielave is wide and flat. Once long ago in pre-Ottoman times, this was Bielave, a village that would remain a village even after it became part of Sarajevo. Only in 1530, when a certain Haji Alia erected a temple, would the village become a city quarter which Alia Beitich notes was described in the cadastral registry as the quarter of Hadji Alia's place of worship known by the name Bielave. One went to Bielave to visit Krunich's bakery for bread and rolls and for flat bread during Ramadan. Every morning in those years when Nonna would take you to the eye clinic for your exercises, you were cross-eyed, suffering from stabismus, and they would sit you down in front of a cold metal device with two peepholes and looking through them, you needed to lead the parrot to its cage, the green parrot with a big yellow beak. You took a roundabout route in order to stop by Kroonich's to buy the morning rolls. Even today I can taste those rolls, and I often find myself hoping I'll taste them again whenever I'm in some unfamiliar eastern city and manage to get rolls from a bakery. In the mid-80s, many new bakeries opened in Sarajevo, People had been spoiled by living well and were no longer satisfied by just any old bread, and the bakeries began to compete with other, one another. Thus did the rumours about Krunich begin to spread. Late at night, they said, when no one was watching, someone would deliver piglets to the shop and Krunich would put pork into the dough for the flat bread. There wasn't a grain of truth in this, of course, as anyone who thought about it even a little bit knew. But the rumour had the effect of making the poor baker swear up and down that he was not doing something that everyone knew he wasn't doing. And of course he felt a little guilty, because a person feels guilty when people accuse him of something, however unlikely the accusation might be. The guilt wasn't towards those who falsely accused him, but towards those who truly believed it. At the time you laughed. Everyone around you was stunned at the sort of world we lived in, at the things people were willing to believe. When you remember this today, you're seized by anger, and suddenly nothing is funny anymore. Everything is a question of human feeling and perspective. What was once funny now seems like a premonition. Both the laughter and the anger, meanwhile, are real. But if one were to write a novel about Sarajevo in the 80s, it would need to be told from that older vantage point, where the rumour of the pork in Krunich's flatbread was a nasty joke, but still just a joke. And that's all I wanted to say about this book really and yeah if you want to you can find it I think you have to find it online if you're based in the UK but it's just wonderful writing and I loved it <laughs>